Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot and really a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the militia. Joe, what are you doing, bro? Me and Joe are accidentally twinning <laughs> this evening. So... <laughs> we are with the t-shirts uh yeah, you're gonna have to change that welcome yeah not happening buddy uh welcome everybody it's been uh two weeks so we're back to try to wrap up a little bit of what happened plus we're going to have uh tyler morona and michael lasker on the program looking forward to that we're going to talk kind of some perspective from their point of view having played at this level and played with Syracuse and what they've seen and what their expectations are. Of course, we're going to do some buy seller holds as well as get everybody's predictions for the uh, final record of the season for the Syracuse Orange football team. So before we do all of that stuff, obviously we've got to talk about the good folks over at um, Spotify Green Room. If there's folks over there, I know we're over there. Are you over there? Because if you are, you should follow us at Q's Militia. Go to the iOS or Android store and download that app today. All you need is an email address, a password, and a username, and boom, you're in. And you can follow us. You can get notifications when we go live, and you can get in the green room there, and you can, you know notify us if you want to get on and speak that's how we're going to do, try be trying to do our fan feedback for this football season and the upcoming basketball season you don't have to just listen to us you can do whatever you want you can start your own thing there's a wide range of topics you don't have to stick to sports you can do whatever you want so please go over to the ios or android stores and download the spotify green room app it's free go do it go do it now thank you all right joe just to get into a little Sir. bit of this uh, real quick, just some quick uh, basketball news and um, a little bit of football news, and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another decommit for the uh, 2022 class, and that would be four star wing Kamari Lands. He tweeted out, I would like to thank Coach Beheim, Coach Mack, and at QSM MBB for everything they have done. And with that being said, I'll be open in my recruitment. And he also mentioned about the possibility of returning back to Syracuse. He's going to leave that as an option for him. As Christian de Guzman uh, reminds us over at News Magician, he's the second player to decommit from the 2022 class, uh, including five-star point guard Dior Johnson. He de decommitted earlier last year. And so, you know, that's kind of a hit. It's kind of a hit. But this is why we don't count our chickens for the eggs hatch. And yeah. with, with that being said, um, That's you. No, no harm, no foul. I mean, this is a this one sucks. Obviously, it sucks, right? Yeah. Well, so. I, again, they and they've been writing stories about it. I think it's going to come down to the NIL stuff. Uh, you know, I think, and I think we talked about this, but some schools that are going to be able to use that NIL as a recruiting tool. Um, I mean, money is. I mean, that's the good. point of what this whole thing pretty is. Pretty good bargaining chip, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, and and realistically, I mean, this was. They offered him a scholarship, but this was a surprise. Um, it was a surprise commit. Uh, he hasn't even visited the school yet. So it was really a situation where, I mean, he hasn't visited the school. It was a surprise to the coaches. And from, from what I understand, I mean, they're not going to accept a scholarship until, you know, they get the kid there and they visit the school and stuff like that. So I don't even really know if it was accepted. So he committed, but uh, – I think that there was always something there that was a little different about it. And um, him saying that he's going uh, to open it back up. And I think he's going out west to uh, a prep school for his last year. So, um, you know, there are some schools out there that are probably uh, a little bit more good looking of a school when it comes to NIL stuff. And obviously every kid's going to have their different opinions about it and, you know, how much it's going to affect their recruiting. 
Um, but obviously, uh, in this situation, it did. And I just have a feeling that this is this is going to be um, part of recruiting from here on out. Sadly. Yeah, well, I mean, in, at least now, since we've got this going on, this can be taken into consideration before you verbally commit. Right. So this will all be baked in from from here on out. Right. So, um, I mean, with that being said, you know, there's a possibility he just he stays with Syracuse. I mean, the what Buddy Beheim doing is at Syrac- at Syracuse with the NIL stuff is is unprecedented. I mean, he's already got the logo and he's being able to use right. that. He's so now, you know, you're going to be, it's going to be a merit based thing. So the better you are, the more popular, popular you are, obviously the more money you can make. And so, and a I, lot of that too comes down to obvious, um, you know, chances too. Uh, there's going to be places that are always going to have the businesses and the companies that are going to be able to, uh, pay these guys for uh, commercials and you know show ups and stuff like that. Like I just in, in Syracuse, I mean, especially during COVID right now, there's probably a lot of businesses you know that um, they can't afford this kind of stuff, and you know it's sometimes it's difficult because Syracuse is kind of a small city, so you never really it's know just, what kind of situations a lot of those businesses are in. Where in a normal situation you'd probably be already seeing guys getting a little bit more money doing commercials and doing stuff like that. So right. small city, small market. I mean, it's a sm- Syracuse is a small market. Yeah. Us growing up there didn't feel that way, but guess what? It's, it is. It's pretty small in retrospect. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, a couple stories from Mike McAllister over at SI Syracuse. Uh, the first of which came out this uh, past week, Cody Shear. He was, um, Expected to start well to play this 2021 season. He's left the program after transferring from Arizona State, according to AllSyracuse.com. And, uh, you know, I mean, never, never step foot on the field. I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Joe, but. Um, no, nah, he was there for a cup of coffee, man. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, right. I mean, he exactly. obviously, it comes down to a situation where he either came in and just saw that he was too far down the depth chart to be able to build well, up and he just didn't wasn't comfortable there or is the situation where maybe he just isn't as good as his four star you know preceded him when he first committed to Oregon and then transferred to Arizona State and everything like that so top um, 10 player out of Oregon during his recruiting class yeah so. he was um, but you know again he comes in for you know he's behind in the spring practice he's behind on camp and I don't even think he was here for two weeks and decided to, to head back. So, I don't know. Maybe the East Coast just isn't his thing. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he said, saw last year's snow accumulation and didn't realize how bad it could get. Although, or- <laughs> Oregon, not great either, by the way. Right. So, anyways, okay. Well, we had one go. Then we had one added. This one for the 2022 class. Uh, offensive lineman Chad Schuster, 6'6", 280, offensive tackle, offers from Bowling Green, Ball State, Buffalo, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Toledo, and others, according to Mike McAllister. Uh, also, Florida State, Michigan, uh, were interested. So uh, he's the 12th player to commit to the 2022 class overall and the second offensive lineman joining Joe Cruz. So as we just talked about, depth at the offensive line, one out, one in, and uh, we'll build from there. I mean, yeah. look – Guys are going to go. I mean, it's a little bit different with basketball because we just talked with Kamari Lance. There's obviously way less players, right? And way less people fighting for the same spot. And people are going to go. And they're going to come and they're going to go. But all that matters to me is who suited up playing on the field or standing on the sidelines. That's all that matters to me at the end of the day. So uh, with the addition of of Chad Schuster, Joe, what do you think? No, I just I'm a big kid, and this is kind of par for the course for us. Uh, a lot of times we get these three stars, and we um, pretty much, you know, their only offers usually are from some MAC schools and stuff like that, and then they're getting some interest from some some bigger D1 schools. So uh, he committed to us. I, depending on the recruitment, I'm sure he'll probably get a couple more offers, maybe from, from, from some big schools. Uh, so there might be a chance of a decommitment, but a lot of times this far in to it, um, these are the type of guys that we end up getting. So usually these kind of guys are the guys that, you know, three stars that are lower three stars that sometimes fall between the cracks and, uh, you know, 
all the Mac schools. I mean, we, we usually get a lot of guys that, you know, Mac schools send scholarships to. So uh, the, the, the players or the other teams that were interested, uh, Michigan, Florida State, uh, not as good as they traditionally are, but still, you know, big name schools. So um, it just tells you that he's got something there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously, welcome, Chad. Last thing, real quick. And then we will set up to bring Tyler and Michael on. Kramer Cook, Syracuse football's director of recruiting. He has left the program. He announced on social media he's going to go back home to uh, Minnesota to be a recruiting st- in a recruiting strategy position for the Minnesota Golden Gophers football program. So we wish him luck. He's been here since I think I don't have it written down here, but I want to say it was like 2013 or something like that. I think so. He's been here for a minute, so uh, obviously we wish him luck. Going back home, everybody, you know, you got a chance to go back home. You go back home, and and boy, he he had he must have, he changed all of his Twitter stuff fairly quickly. I might add, <laughs> so he was ready. <laughs> he was ready. Um, so uh, that is that. Joe, do you have anything to add for? The last couple weeks of news, anything stuck out to you? We're going to go, we're going to talk about this ACC Big Ten Pac-12 Alliance stuff with Tyler and Michael to open up that conversation. And okay. uh, I think, I think that's pretty much it. Pretty slow, yeah, no. pretty slow couple we're gonna weeks. We're going to hit some stuff, we're going to hit some stuff up on the, uh, the last week, Fan Fest. Some of what was going on, some freshmen, stuff like that, or. Oh, you can do that right now. What, as far as Fan Fest and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have I mean, a montage later or no? No. Well, I, I do, but that was before Fan Fest, I believe. Or maybe it was the day before, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, but that's the one I'm talking about. So we're good. Never mind. Okay. All right. All right. Join us now, offensive and defensive lineman Tyler Morona, our good buddy. Everybody knows. And Michael Lasker, uh, his first time appearing on the show. Welcome, both of you. We appreciate you joining us. And, um,. I just really want to see what y'all have to say about the state of the program and what you guys think going forward. Um, and we're going to do our buy, sell, or holds, and we're going to get your predictions. But first, uh, I saw this thing. I thought this would be good to open it up. The, Tyler and I, we talked a couple weeks ago about kind of um, setting up what, what Texas and Oklahoma was doing in, the, in getting to the SEC. And I brought up the fact that I think it would be cool to have a 32-team, like, you know, conference, and they just work this thing like the NFL does as far as the playoffs and everything. Well, the ACC, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, they've, they've formed an alliance, and that's all they're calling it. There's no contracts involved. They say they're going to do some games here and there, right? But there's, other than that, it's pretty broad, it's pretty vague, and no one really knows, honestly, what it even means. So, with, with that said, <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> what does it mean? I, I don't know. Like, do you guys know? I don't know. Like, I, don't, I think this is all made up. I mean, it sounds made up to me. Like, the fact that everybody is just making sure that, you know, to me, this is the ACC's way of making sure that Clemson and Florida State don't also join the SEC. I, I really think that that's all this really comes down to, because if that happens, then the, the landscape of college football, is, it's just over, like as we once knew it. So don't you think it's changing, though, right now anyway? I mean, hopefully in the future, I don't know what it looks like, but hopefully the NCAA as an entity is out or at least at a very limited capacity. Um, so, I mean, there's probably some muscle there forming this alliance being like, Hey, you know, we can do this on our own type thing. Same thing that everybody else is probably going to be doing, you know? Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely could see that. Cause I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the NCAA is just, I mean, they're just trying to control everything. Yeah. And I think this is the, in a way, I think this is a way where comp big power five conferences to kind of do their own thing, you know, make money how they want to make money. And ultimately, you know, like I, I like <laughs> like what you said, having Clemson, you know, not join the SEC would be, uh, you know, it wouldn't be good for sports. <laughs> it, it really wouldn't be. And also, like, as much as it is annoying to me that we lose to Clemson every year, except for the one time, of course, and we and we have played them well. To me, it's like if the ACC 
I mean, that it would really fold very quickly in my opinion. The same way that the Big East folded when the two last big name schools left that. And um, I grew up watching the ACC, and you know, and there's like obviously some people will still have like the traditional view of it, but um, whatever it takes to get the NCAA out and whatever new regime is coming in quicker, I'm I'm okay with. So I'll just say it that way. Yeah, Joe, any thoughts on this? You and I didn't even talk. Yeah, about it. I mean, the only thing I really heard about it is that they're looking at it almost as like getting together a voting block if it comes down to you know a twelve team playoff or something like that to kind of just make sure that the SEC doesn't get a ridiculous amount of schools in. You know, I, I just almost look at it like it's that like what Tyler was saying, like this big big bag scary monster that was formed to just try to kind of keep SEC and some of those other schools like Clemson in check. So, but again, who knows? Um, so, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. And I really hope it's a, I hope it's a way to, um, to push the NCAA, show some muscle and push the NCAA out of this thing and get them to, um, put them in check and make them realize, I think they're already in check after the NIL stuff. What do you guys think about some of this NIL stuff? And we just talked briefly about Kamari Lands. He's decommitting. One of his main reasons was to, you know, kind of reopen his recruitment and look at some of the NIL stuff and see what mark he's going to be. He's a hot commodity. He can probably go almost anywhere to to be able to do that, and it adds a whole another dynamic. Does this hurt or help Syracuse basketball or football, just in general? Does it hurt or hurt or help Syracuse being Syracuse being Syracuse and being you know, twelve degrees? For eight months. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I want to hear from Mike on this. Yeah, one. I mean, I mean, I think it it, it, it helps and it hurts. I'm gonna. It, it helps because I think there, you know, with Syracuse being a college town, there's a lot of the local places they're True. gonna want to definitely, you know, uh, partner up with a lot of the athletes and so forth. Um, you know, I can only imagine, you know, when me and Tyler were there, the amount, <laughs> you know, of endorsements and so forth and partnerships we could have had together, which is connecting with people, you know, right. Just, I would have quit playing earlier and just started, you know, signing deals for my player. Like I would have like saw right. what was happening and then like I'm wasting exactly. my time with this football thing. It's time for me to start, you know, getting to where I'm at now with my current job is like I need to broker deals. Like this is like where where it's at, right? So go continue. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, and then and then you know, I guess the the downside of it is, you know, you got like the Miami's that are just they're doing something crazy for for all their athletes um you know I'm sure Florida State's doing something crazy I know I'm sure Clemson I mean the quarterback is what it was like a million dollar deal or something along those Mm. lines or something like that so I mean if you look at it from a business perspective and just be smart about it and have someone in your corner you know you could come into Syracuse and make a lot of money because there's a lot of small businesses and small you know boot sponsorships that will definitely like to partner with a lot of the athletes you know coming in you trying to tell me that god rest his soul facillo wasn't going to give us like you know ten thousand dollar deals a piece like i mean that guy <laughs> he was pedaling a car on anybody like it's huge you know, i mean yeah. yeah exactly it's like if if a dog could drive a car they'd be driving out with the facillo vehicle yeah. right you know so it's like the least that he could do is give us a couple grand to make sure that you know, we were taken care of at the very least. So I agree with Mike. I think that, of course, like there's opportunities. There's also big blue collar opportunities there, too. And then you got Buddy Bayheim. He's already got a seal cereal or something yeah. like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's I think that sky is the limit for a place like Syracuse, especially with the media connections that we have. That's the one thing I said. It's like if I was a Syracuse recruit, I'd be saying, how can you parlay my media career beyond just playing football? Like you guys have the connections like you tell me what you can do for me now. So, yeah, and we and we uh, mentioned that too or earlier when we were uh, pre-recording some stuff, and I was just saying that right now, timing-wise, in a smaller market, I think you know with with COVID and with what's going on with smaller businesses, uh, I think that it kind of timely it, it, as far as in right now in the situation, I think it hurts us more than like you know a school like a UCLA or something that's got a you know just huge market because they're always going to ha- be able to find money somewhere, you know, so. I agree that definitely our small businesses are definitely are around the team, but you just sometimes don't know how much those people can help in a time like this, you know? So that was kind of my point to it. Good point. Yeah. So, all right, moving on to, to this year and the things current right now, obviously Syracuse football had, has had some struggles. 
okay? To say the least. Really? Like, last year, <laughs> bes- <laughs> besides, besides, besides the injuries and some of the other BS, right, you had COVID thrown in. Now, we all played by the same rules, and the, the playing field was leveled to some extent with all that stuff. But Syracuse just got destroyed by all of it. I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible. So, coming into this year, those rules, some of those rules are still in place, but things are looking up as far as the COVID stuff, right? The offensive line is obviously going to be better. You got Chris Bleich, and, um, you know, you got Aaron Service returning. Uh, by the way, you know, you got the other guys returning, Chris Elmore, Josh Black, um, McKinley Williams, right? So, I mean, the little bit of leadership helps a little bit. So, what do you – Michael, I got to get Michael's thoughts on this. Yeah. Offensive line stuff. What what is the state of the program coming into this year? I mean, I think it comes down. They 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 have to win. Like there's no there's no more excuses. You know there there's nothing. There's no more. Oh, you know this person's not ready. This person's a freshman. They yes, have they have the you. depth now. Yes. you know they've been playing for three years now. I mean, service is a six year center. I mean, senior. You know he 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 knows it. I, I have nothing but confidence and faith in him. He, he knows it. The, the transfer from Florida, Chris, I mean, he's played on the biggest stages. So I definitely think that'll help coming in. And then, um, you know, uh, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. The Canadian tackle, uh, number 60. <laughs> his, Bergeron. Bergeron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like his game a lot. I really like his game a lot. He, You know, his leverage, you know, his punch, he has pretty good feet. So I definitely think that, you know, whoever's at quarterback, whether it's, um, you know, uh, DeVito, um, or, or, the, or the transfer from Mississippi State, you know, I think that they should be successful. Um, but, you know, as far as the state, I mean, they, there's no more excuses this year. Like, there's none. Like, I don't, I, I'm going to start calling people out. <laughs> I, f- I feel like, I feel like, what, to your point, Michael, that we've given Syracuse, I know Joe and I have, okay? More so that I do this I, podcast. I will raise my hand on that one as well. I have also given them the pass for things that should not be passable. So right, right. In 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 this not doing this show, I'm not. I'm probably not giving them a pass. I'm like these some of these other some of these other found some of these other people on Twitter and stuff. Right. <laughs> so um, I almost lost it. So anyway, with that with that being said, to to Mike's point, I mean, no more excuses. I mean, this is Dino's what sixth season, sixth. Yes, yeah, it'll be six, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, and I, I fear for if this thing doesn't turn around quick, I mean, wh- where does this leave Dino Babers to it's, some extent? Yeah, it, it's it's sad because, I mean, he's I mean he's easily one of the best coaches I've ever had. Oh, he's and it's the most likable, like, yeah. It's I mean, it's just like every year it's just like small thing. It's just execution, you know. I mean, obviously last year was a COVID year, you know, and um, that was just a, a mess. But, I mean, the – the year, and that's what I was afraid of. Me and Tyler talked about this. The year they went to the, um, you know, Camping World Bowl, they had the good season. We were like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know it doesn't go downhill from here. And unfortunately, that happened. So I, I definitely think this is a bounce back year for them, from them for, for them this year. Well, you know where the expectations go after a season like that in Syracuse. So yeah, we we try really hard not to put expectations on. Um, the teams in general beforehand, but I just feel like something's got to change coming into this year, and I don't know. You know, I don't have like the warm fuzzies about it. I mean, we and we'll get in. We we'll, we can get into that, but well, how much how much do you think that goes to to offensive line coaches? I feel like I mean, how many offensive line coaches did you have while you were there, Michael? I had uh, two two coaches. Two off. No, two. Excuse, no, three three. I'm sorry, three three offensive line coaches. Right. Okay. How many good offensive line coaches did you have? While you, were there? <laughs> you know, people follow the show or on uh, on Twitter, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna say I learned a lot from every one of them. But I will say Coach Lynch was my favorite offensive line coach. Okay, so he was there like yeah. when Babers Babers came in in 2016. Okay, yeah, yeah. So so if you read I mean, between in, the lines, fellas, I, I got mean, you. We, we can kind of take you. away what we, what we have there. I I got you. But even <laughs> since then, I mean, with with Kavanaugh, and now we got Lynch. Um, I mean, looking at the pieces that we have and everything, like you said, uh, yeah. as far as the excuses go, I, I don't know if I can listen to another analogy about baking a cake. I, I just <laughs> I can't do it anymore. Like like you said, it's a six year, and you you should have your your depth and your and your team, 
to a certain point at, at this point, like I said, and obviously there are certain things COVID is, I mean, that's the last excuse. I think uh, these fan base is, is really going to give this team this year. They have to do some. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, playing offensive linemen, like it's hard. It's like one of the hardest positions to develop because the strength isn't there. It's not like a, a quarterback, you know, that's timing receiver, just running back. That's quickness. That's other things, but offensive line, you're just dealing with grown men, you know, and it's just, their bodies just don't develop as quickly as some of the other positions. So, like I, you know, like I said, I mean earlier, some of these guys have been playing. They got thrown into fire, you know, two three years ago as a freshman. So they should be ready to go right now, you know. So oh that's, yeah, that's the expectation I have, you know, when I watch the uh, the games this year. Um, and you know, Michael, what it's like being an offensive lineman, obviously, kind of the unsung heroes. No one really thinks about it until uh, your quarterback's running for his life every play. And we've gotten a huge dose of that. I think Syracuse fans have a newfound respect for guys like you and in, in being able to protect the quarterback. And we talk a lot about cohesion. You talked about having three different coaches. And, I mean, something like that. these guys that are playing now have had a couple of different coaches. How much does that affect, you know, the, the cohesion in, in play on the line? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely does affect it a lot because – Every every offensive line coach has a different message for the most part, you know, and a different a different identity of the group. You know, I can think of, you know, my first offensive line coach at Syracuse, Coach Perlis. You know, that was like a straight up like old school, like NFL approach. And then Coach Adam, it was more of like a um, a mixture of, you know, college and, and NFL. And then Coach Lynch was kind of like the nuances of offensive line and, and everything. So uh, the identity is different and it affects it does affect the offensive line, you know. You know, you look at some other programs, you know, that have the same O-line coach. Like, I don't know, like you just you – know, in Iowa, you think of a program like that, that typically they have the same offensive line coaches for, this for you know, 10-plus years. It's plug and play. You know, guys yeah. just are rotating in because, you know, they have that identity. And I think that, you know, having multiple offensive line coaches is definitely tough on a player because, you know, the message just isn't the same, you know, because they teach different fundamentals, different te- techniques – they, they, they value some things other than, you know, other coaches value. So it's definitely challenging. Tyler, what do you, what do you, you're, you're awfully quiet. It's the first time for everything. Why are you so quiet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like just a, a happy observer right now. This is, this is a great show that I'm observing right now. Tyler, by the way, put this, put this, put this together. We, I really appreciate it. Cause this is, yeah, is, of course. The, uh, I mean, it's just like, well, I mean, let me ask you, like, would you want three of your friends to be hanging out or, you know, four, if you include myself all at the same time? I think, you know, you would, you know, it's a good yeah, deal. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yes. so Tyler, what are, what are your kind of like, I mean, you don't have to give me like full out expectations. We're going to do predictions if you guys want later, but what, what are your expectations just coming into, coming into this year? Wow. Um, you know, I looked at the schedule two days ago, and um, we, it, you know, weirdly, I think we have to start 3-0. and And if we don't, I think it mm. could be trouble really quickly because there's just a stretch in the middle where it's like, okay, if we go, even if we go 2-1, and one, that could conceivably turn into 2-5 and five really quickly. Yeah. I mean, and then when, once you're 2-5, and five, it's very hard to all of a sudden be like, okay, now we're going to win four straight games or five straight <laughs> games to go to a really good bowl game. Or a bowl game in general, right? But if you start three and zero, then you're like, okay, I know we can do it. We like Michael and I and the and the kids now, like they don't have any you know prior history with Rutgers, but the fans know what type of rivalry that is. I still believe in it because I was a Big East fan back in the day and whatnot. And it's always good to beat up on an East Coast team, especially when you're supposed to be the pride of the East Coast or the Northeast. Let me be more particular in that. Um, I agree with Michael. I think that. We should have reasonable expectations of the offensive line going into the season. So if we do have that, then now what it becomes is like, okay, can the quarterbacks and receivers work together? And I really hope that the receivers help out the quarterback this year because that has not been the case for like, what, three, four years now? Because if we think about it, all the receivers that we have come to know and love – are guys that have played like out of their minds given the circumstances like Steve Ishmael, Amba Edatawo, Custis. Like you go down the line, these are like NFL players that are like just playing like LeBron James level ball when like they have to carry the rest of the team. Now, if the offensive line is doing their job, the receivers are doing their job. To me, it doesn't really matter who's behind center because their job is going to be easy, right? Like I, I want to make this offense as easy as possible for the guy throwing the football. 
Um, how do we replace three NFL defensive backs? I, I hope we have three more. You know, I don't really know how you do that. Um, our defensive line has been absolutely horrible. Michael and I talk about it all the time. Like, it is embarrassing for us, the two guys that played the position that we love, that's the worst units on the team. It's very embarrassing mm. to wake up every morning and know that that's the case. Yeah. So, like, Michael and I, we're fully ready to, like, either go demonstrate that we can do it better still or, like he said, we're ready to call people out and just go, all right, you know, it's we're done. So, yeah, the, the, I don't know. The DB situation was so strong last year. Coming into this year, you still got the Garrett Williams, who was a, just came became a star so quick last year. Obviously right. a talented guy. Um, and Our linebackers yeah. are great as well. Yeah. Yep. It's just, yep. It really comes down to the front three or four. Like, I really don't know how it's put. Apparently a guy in my apartment building trains Cody Roscoe. He's from Houston. And yep. he was saying that, like, Cody Roscoe and they're, you know, they go to the same gym and he's training. He's like, oh, he's got a chip on his shoulder this year. It's like, okay, great. Like, I'll believe him when I see it, dude. Like, we had, like, what, one, two sacks. Like, he's not putting pressure. And we play in sub package and nickel, like, you know, 10% of the time now because, you know, we're playing the three three five. But still, it's like, like, we get no push on run and we get no pressure. It's all of our disguised looks on defense that get the sacks and the pressure and the interceptions. Like, it has nothing to do with our line whatsoever. So that's really what I'm hoping <laughs> for. You know, it's funny too, Tyler, you say that because like you look at last year and then everyone's making a bit, oh, the the seniors are coming back and it's like, well, they better do better than what they did last year because, but at the same time, it's still going to probably be better than what would be behind them uh, as far as depth chart. So a lot um, of that's young yeah. red shirt, red shirt, freshmen and freshmen in, you know, DBs, cornerbacks, um, you know, so. Hopefully, yeah. I mean that's that's my biggest worry with defense. I mean, obviously we got some guys coming back, and I think it's still strong, but that's a worry to to, to Tyler's point. So, um, so yeah, do well. we do we want to talk quarterbacks? Because obviously this is the elephant in the room, right, with Syracuse football right now. So <laughs> now or never, t- Tom, yeah. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy DeVito has obviously been very loyal to Syracuse five years. He hasn't wanted to transfer. He hasn't not tried to opt out. He was Dino's guy. Um, now, when spring ball started, Dino said he wanted that he wanted Garrett Trader and Tommy DeVito to make this black and white, so he didn't have to make a tough decision. He wanted it to be for everybody to see. That was one week, and then the next week we're talking about, or maybe two weeks later, we're talking about a two quarterback system. I mean, so okay, so okay, I guess they didn't make it black and white, right? So. Now we're talking about a two quarterback system, and I think that says a lot about Schrader being the new guy. While while Tommy's been here, and that's not, I'm not ba- Tommy Bash. I'm just saying for him to be the new guy and to impress that much to for them to see that he deserves to be on the field with Tommy to some capacity, that says a lot to me. So, is this situation come down to loyalty? I mean, we we don't, I guess we're speculating because we're not going to know right until they hit the field, right? Because I have no idea. I mean, we know Joe's praised Garrett Trader's tape. It's good. It's impressive. It's a highlight reel. It's a highlight reel for a reason, as I, you know, as I like to say. I mean, obviously, it's full it's of highlights. It's a highlight reel with him starting at Mississippi State. Okay. Um, it's not for, like a high school highlight reel. I get it. Right. I get it. Um, but but when it comes to Coach Babers, there's a, there's a part of me that thinks he's, he's loyal to a fault because it's his character, I think. Uh, is it possible he's doing this with, with Tommy DeVito? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's, it's very possible because, I, I mean, I would have thought Tommy probably would have transferred by now. Just, um, you know, just try to, you know, just see what else is out there. Just see what other options he has. I, I would definitely would have thought he would have transferred. But, I mean, I definitely could think – I could see how that could play a factor, you know, with, with Coach Babers, you know, with the, the loyalty, loyalty aspect. You know, definitely going to give Tommy – you know, another chance, you know, to, to prove himself, you know, he's definitely more familiar with the system, but I, I do think, you know, it, for me, I'm looking at it like this. I'm looking at it like the Cam Newton and Mac Jones situation. I think Tommy's going to be on a very short leash. If he Fs it up right up in the first two games, uh, coach Baber's going to have no choice, but to go to Garrett, you know, and that, and I think that's what it's going to come down to. And I think early on, you know, we have a, the first game against Ohio, I, I'm, I'm, that, that should be a, a, a win for us. I would like to see what both quarterbacks can do, especially, right. you know, with Garrett. You know, I guess he's more of a running, athletic type of quarterback. Um, and, you know, with, 
you know, not saying that he's dungy, but just some of the packages that we can potentially have for him, I think could very, very be, uh, to be very beneficial. And definitely, you know, I want to see that no huddle up tempo, you know, come back because it just has been non-existent the last couple of seasons. Yeah, but they just couldn't execute it, right? So maybe this year they right. can. And in Tommy's in Tommy's defense too, obviously yeah. he hasn't been playing with a full deck every year right. either. So I mean, he's had the short end of a stick to some extent, and he's had time to grow. He seems pretty confident if you watch like his um, some of his interviews that they do on Q's TV for YouTube and stuff. I mean, he looks he looks very confident, which is good, which is good. Um, but like I've you said, also met short com- leash. The most confident guys in the world that are dead wrong. <laughs> you know, it's like it doesn't mean that they're. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. But, yeah. However, yeah. Um, you know, I think, man, man alive. I, I think, you know, Michael's kind of on, on track with this. Loyalty is definitely a deal, but Tommy, he also has a highlight reel from a season that he played at Syracuse. You know, it's not like he also hasn't shown something at some point. The roster around him when he did succeed was a lot better. And he actually cleaned up like one of the best player or like, you know, one of our favorite players of all time. Now, Eric Dungy's mess a couple of times that put mm-hmm. us in that 10 win season. Right. So it's like, I don't really know. It's like, it seems like sometimes it's just like this program has like this, like, like haze around it that we just need to like shake and get out of here. It's, and yeah. it always has to be the guy that we're not expecting. Like it can never be like Terrell hunt was supposed to start for us. And like, he was supposed to be the guy that was good. And then Dungy comes in to replace him. And then he's the guy. Okay. Now Dungy goes in, he gets hurt again, like Terrell did. And now Tommy comes in. Now we want Tommy. Okay. Now Tommy's in, we hate him. Now we need the next guy. And it's, it's, it's never like we can actually like process all the way throughout with like whoever comes in and is supposed to earn the job and, and go from there. But I was looking at Tommy's stats from his entire career with us. And I was averaging out like all of his stats based off of like what it would be with a regular season on like compared to an average quarterback throughout the country. So on average, I think a quarterback throws 450 passes. So I did uh, per 450 passes. Tommy comes in in the bottom third statistically over his entire career. So like he's averaging like 200 or, or 2300 yards and 18 touchdowns with four interceptions or something like that. That's a very low level power five quarterback. But to, you know, we also have had a robust run game with many, like, you know, Moniel, Strickland, all these guys. So they eat up a lot of yards, too. But my point with this whole thing is that we haven't been able to move the ball, period, for three yeah. years. I mean, it's just like we're in the bottom of the bottom of the bottom in the entire Power Five. Like, it's it's just I don't I don't really know. Like, I don't I don't know what to say about it. Like, is Tommy good? Is he bad? Well, you know, it's, it's incomplete. Yeah, it is. And that's, I guess that's, that's what's so strange about it for him being here as long as he has. We don't really know. So, and that's going to be exciting. No. Go ahead, Joe. And I'm along the lines too, Tyler, where like a lot of it just, like you said, has to do, I think, with the offense. With the offensive line, the way that they've been playing the last two years, I don't think that any quarterback would look good. Um, right. And he's, you know, and again, I go to Sean too. I made this point where you look at the history of Syracuse and you take away, you know, Sands, Ryan Nassib, and uh, having, you know, Doug Marone and an NFL offensive line coaches and having some of the lines that they had there, you know, they got exactly the seasons. Mine, you take him away, then we've only been successful with with dual threat quarterbacks. Exactly. Um, so it, you look at it and Tommy, he, he wants to sit in the pocket. He wants to throw. He proved that he could that one year with Dungy when we, you know, you know we went to the 110 games. Um, but now you're looking at it like the last two years. I don't think that that our offensive line has been conducive for a pocket passer. And that's just, you know, going from Dungy to a pocket passer. And now you get this guy, Garrett Schrader, and who, who he did the, he ran the RPO at Mississippi state against great defenses and, and was pretty successful as a, as a retro freshman. So uh, he's got the size six, four, two thirty. He can run. And I just think that this offensive line is really going to dictate who, who starts. Uh, because if they can't keep Tommy upright, he's proven that he just doesn't make the right decisions, whether he's rolling out, uh, he stays in the pocket, he holds the ball too long, he really can only get to, like, what, first, second read anyway. But um, that's really, really what's been hurting us. So if our offensive line can't keep him upright, it really doesn't matter how good Tommy is. We're going to have to put somebody in there that can run and make plays. Yeah. I guess that's and real good. And real quick to that point, there is a way for Tommy to still be a, a quote-unquote pocket passer 
and that's to run like the old San Francisco 49ers, like, you know, West Coast. But then our receivers would have to be our best players. And yep. they're not even close either, right? So right. it's like we would need one or the other, and we've had none. So um, anything else to wrap this up? I'm going to do some buy, sell, or holds. Nothing? Okay. Yeah. All right, look. Buy, sell, or hold. Buy it, sell it, hold. You get one hold. How much? Per- one hold. One, one hold. hold. Okay. One hold. But then you got to sing happy birthday to Joe. And it's not even his birthday, so it makes it even more awkward. Oh, it was Michael's birthday yesterday, was it? actually. It was. It oh, was. then you got to yeah. sing Michael happy birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. Did you see, <laughs> did you see his uh, picture that he posted for his birthday? It was a top one picture of the year. I just want to say that. On, I, is I, it I on Twitter? Yeah, I, I had to flex the chain you got me, Tyler. I, I, I definitely... Well, hey, I, I'm just... <laughs> It was, I was, I saw it, I was like, dang, man, like I, and I was telling my wife, it's like one of my favorite annual traditions, seeing my, like one of Michael's pictures go up. Cause they're always just like, just puts you right in a good mood. Like you're just cruising into a Saturday and you're like, dang, man, that was a good picture. Yeah. I, I appreciate awesome. it, man. Of course, man. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> what are the chances? Um, all right. Buy, sell, or hold. The dome will remain open at full capacity throughout the Syracuse football season. Tyler. Have to buy. Buy, 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 buy. Okay. Joe. <laughs> have to. I have to. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm going to sell. Really? You think they're going to yeah. reel this thing back? Uh, I've seen nothing <laughs> to tell me any different. So, yeah. Okay. Michael. Sad, sadly. Uh, 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 I'm going to have to sell as well, unfortunately. There's really? just so many things that are changing, and uh, I'd probably say halfway through the season there might be some type of capacity arrangements or something different that might affect it. Well, I guess, you know, this started in the, the, the southern heat wave. is really kicked up and crested, at least where I'm at, and we got through it. So I, I'm, I'm, I know there's no sports going on, but we did do – we did all the kids' things and, and – everything like that for lacrosse camps and basketball camps and all that stuff. And uh, the basketball camp was inside during the height of this thing this summer. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to buy, but it wouldn't surprise me if they reel back. Now, I mean, I guess it comes down to the vaccination numbers or whatever and compliance inside the dome. So, uh, but I'd buy, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, golly, these athletes need fans. And he needs as many as I can get. That's my point. I mean, yeah, if we're, if we're taking, yeah, if we're taking butts out of the seats, we're literally just we're taking away our chances. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's terrible, right? And wasn't it tough to watch? Like, you get so excited last year. It's like so excited to watch football and basketball, and and and, and you watch the like, first couple games, and you're you're super excited. You're just glad it's going on, and then you get a little used to, it and you're like, man, this really sucks without fans. I remember looking so forward to going to play Clemson. <laughs> At Clemson last year, because there was going to be fans. It's you know what I'm saying. It's just it, that yeah. that dynamic. I missed it so much. Yeah, uh, trying to create your own energy, like it's just it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's not going to happen. With the no. with the with you, the pumped in fans. crowd noise. Remember how bad the yeah. pumped in crowd noise was. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, so well, it would be like after third down, and then on fourth down they'd be playing the third down bell. Yes, right. It was pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, I played. I played in a high school game. I think like on Wednesday or Thursday night one time, and there was literally nine people in the stands, and I think my grandmother was one of them, and she was like talking through a payphone to somebody. You know, I, you know, she wasn't even paying attention because there was no life whatsoever. <laughs> and I remember specifically that game we. The score was nine to three. No energy whatsoever. Like it was just the worst football game I've ever played in. So I can speak from a little bit of experience. It's no fans is the worst, honestly. Well, it's tough to watch. I promise you that. So, um, all right, a couple of these are similar, but but I, I had to use them. They're 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 from they're from Twitter. We didn't get a ton, but the best one I'm going to save it comes from James. I'm going to save it. Um, Syracuse makes a bowl game this year, finishing six and six. Uh, Joe, oh, well, we're we're giving away our predictions just a little bit, which is fine. Just don't don't Look, give away your I'm, prediction. I'll just, buy. I'll buy. You'll buy. Okay. All right, Michael. 
you know, again, it's going to come down to the offensive line this year, I think. Uh, they do have a favorable schedule, so I'm going to buy. Okay. Tyler. Can I put a caveat on it? If we go 3-0, and <laughs> I buy. If we start through, if, if we go anything but 3-0, and so. Okay, man, 3-0 is going to be tough. We have no choice. We are in this position. Like, and there's just one, the one tough game, obviously, that I think is, is, right. a, is, is the, the wrench in the gears. We have to go 3-0. We have to. <laughs> Trust me. I we know cannot we... lose, dude, after, especially after what's going on right now. We cannot lose to Rutgers at home on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Yeah. Cannot. Yeah. I, I would agree. It would suck. Very bad. Um, I'm going to sell. I hate to be negative, but I'm going to sell. Um, what? Five, well, 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 then what, what say you? Five and seven or what? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Baber sticks with the two QB system for the entire year. Buy, sell, or hold. From, and from James Zuba. Start with oh, you, I'm Sean. sorry. I'm sorry. Me. Oh, I, uh, I, I sell. I sell. I think cream's going to rise to the top some point, somewhere, somehow. Well, I, I don't know who it's going to be, but I don't, I don't see a, a, a two QB system being that effective. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it could be. I, I just, I don't, I'm not feeling it. It's just me. No, well, that kind of goes into something that I wanted to ask Michael too, but um, we'll do having it now. a situation where, well, having a situation where you have kind of some plays that are ran for. Garrett, but then some plays that are ran for Tommy, uh, and you have different ty- you know, types of schemes and plays and stuff. Uh, I mean, I imagine that that probably makes it a little bit more difficult um, for offensive linemen if you're going to go from like drive to drive or quarter to quarter, changing like a type of player. I mean, I don't know. I'm asking, but yeah, it, it definitely does. I mean, because I mean, the cadence is just different. You know, you have to have a different philosophy, like you know what you know. What, um, Garrett, I'm sure the offensive lineman in the back of their mind are thinking, okay, if I get beat inside, like the play is not a bust. Like I can still, you know, move my feet and try to, you know, and get Garrett will make something happen. You know, right. with a pocket passer, you know, if you get beat inside or beat off the ball quick, I mean, it's a sack. It's you know? over. <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it, 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 as an offensive lineman, I'm not a fan of a two quarter two quarterback system. That's a yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, and with that, I'm gonna sell. Because like you said, it, I think that he's going to use this Ohio game, even though we're not favored. This tryouts. It, uh, Vegas. Uh, it's pretty much, I think they're going to figure out who the quarterback is by then. Because I think we need to before we go into Rutgers. Yeah. Michael, what do you got? Buy, sell, or hold? Uh, yeah, I, I got sell. Um, okay. I, I, I don't think it's happening. I don't think I don't think Coach Babers is a fan of a two quarter. I don't honestly, truthfully, I don't think any coach is a fan of a two quarterback system. Yeah, I mean, just that makes work. sense. And he's probably just saying it because he knows he's going to have to play them both in Ohio to Joe's point or to right. your point rather. So, yeah, I mean, um, that's what we're going to see. And I guess hopefully we don't see it at Rutgers. Maybe there's a distinct difference and in, in, in we know by then. Tyler. So I'm going to take Michael's take and take it one step further. And I will say that nobody likes a two quarterback system, <laughs> even defenders, because as soon as you have a two quarterback system, that means as soon as this guy comes in, you're like, all right, well, now we have to prepare for this guy. And what if he actually isn't actually running the ball this time? You know, it's just, it, I don't know. The only time it's ever worked, right, was Chris Leak and Tim Tebow. They won the national championship. And that was because Tim Tebow was like, what, the first or second best, college best player of all time? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so if. I will just say, Tim Tebow's not walking through the dome doors when we go run out there, and I'm comfortable saying that. Um, but I think that – is it bad to say it's almost a buy because one of them's going to get hurt at some point? Or mm. should I just sell? Well, that's a trend. I don't yeah. want to – I'm not putting that out there. I'm just saying that can I go buy because maybe one of them's going to get – I mean, Tommy has not been – you know, healthy ever either. So, and again, that's not his fault. I know he doesn't wake up and just like, you know, I'm now, I'm now injured. You know, he gets, you know, blasted. <laughs> so, yeah. um, the, the way that we're thinking, I'm going to do the clean sweep and sell. Not, not going to be too quick. Will two quarterbacks play throughout the season? Yeah, they probably will. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Last one from at 315 to 704. Syracuse gets eight plus wins this year. <clears throat> 
Yeah, right. Uh, sell. <laughs> sell. I'm a sell. This this is the I'm, lightning I'm gonna, round. I'm gonna sell. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna sell as well. Okay. Yeah. T- Tyler, you can although say it. we can't see your you thumb, Ty. Thought, although <laughs> thumbs thought. thumbs down for me. Thumbs down. Although, who thought that we were going to win 10 games the season that we did? We definitely didn't. That was a season where yeah. even you and I, Joe, were calling for Dungey to be seated. Was, wasn't it? That was the year, uh, right? That was after the North Carolina game, though. Yeah, I know. That was the that was the Tommy DeVito savior game. Yeah. 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 That was one of the actually the most rem, one of the most remarkable performances I've seen from a backup quarterback Dude. ever. Like, yeah. I was like, wow. And I thought, like, I was like, man. We're just going to win like 11 games forever now that we have this <laughs> <laughs> The thing was, there was there was no expectations for him then. That's the problem And now. that's the problem. Yeah. You're it's like, right. It's like Fitz, Fitz Magic, <laughs> you know, Fitzpatrick. As yeah. a Dolphins fans, you know, they had high expectations. I had high expectations, and whenever he has high expectations, he, it's a bust. I, I, like, love, him. Up. <laughs> I love him because of his Yeah, beard. which is why, why the Washington football team will win the NFC East this year. Give give me a break. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's going to be them or my Giants. You know that, Tyler. So, I think now that that's correct. I do I do believe that. Yeah, I I do believe that's either Dallas or the Giants. Washington, no, there's no scenario in which they win. Giants might pull themselves out of the stink hole this year. (laughs) I think it's possible. In between Daniel Jones's twenty interceptions, maybe yeah, they'll be okay. I'm a Raiders fan, Mike, so I'm perpetually 8-8 eight and eight or under. Okay. And, and I'm just – it's been what? It's been going on 18 years of this. So it's like it's, – it is what it is. I mean, I'm just used to it. So Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a Dolphins fan. I've been – I'm right there with you. 9-7 <laughs> and seven or 8-8, eight and eight, you know. <laughs> oh, how was it for you at Syracuse uh, around all those Bills fans? Did you ever oh, – it, it was terrible. You know, it, it was it's terrible. awful. Yeah. It's really yeah. bad. Like, yeah. People don't really understand the pandemic of Buffalo Bills fans in Syracuse That's, is ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah. I, that is true. I grew that up, is true. I grew up a Raiders fan because of Bo Jackson. And I was taught my cousins, my all my closest friends, everybody Bills fans. And then the, I think the Raiders lost to the Bills in the AFC Championship one year, like fifty-two to three. And I was like, oh, ever since then, the torment that I was put through. I got PTSD from that, bro. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then the four losses, the four Super Bowl losses. Oh, I, was, I threw a party every time, man. Every time. It felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> felt so good. So, all right. Now, speaking that, of the NFL, is Dungy still on the Cincinnati Bengals? I don't I thought, think he played today. Oh, okay. Oof, that's tough. Yeah. I, I could have. Yeah. He, yeah, I didn't see him playing today. I watched the whole game, you know, because they play at my Dolphins, of course. But yeah, of course, yeah. Because I, yeah. well, I, <laughs> I saw Burrow was only going to play three game or three plays, so I figured, oh, he might yeah. get in. Yeah, he didn't play at all. Who played? Nah, he, it was Finley. Um, it was a uh, what's his name? I don't know. It was I think Allen. Allen was one of them, and then okay. the other his backup <laughs> played. But yeah, Dungy didn't get a snap. Mm. Mm. Well. LS steals on special teams or something, but you know, but as a quarterback, yeah. no, yeah, nothing. Well, Trill Williams is like apparently like you know a first round draft pick for the Dolphins. So. Yeah, yeah, he's he's doing some good things. He's got to get that jersey changed up, which I think he will once he makes the roster. Yeah, he'll, he'll make the team. Mm-hmm. He'll make the yeah. team, and then you get, you know yeah. then after cuts, yeah, you get your own. Yeah, you yeah, because yeah, fifty you. fifty one as a corner is just disgusting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never yeah I've never seen a center command the outside like he has. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up about the ten and three season, which are yeah, it was ten and three, right? I think one thing that went into that, that Michael kind of you know with the expectations uh, comment kind of clarified for me was that when we went four and eight all those years, and then all of a sudden it was ten wins. Like there wasn't a build up to that. Like it was like, oh, we're four and eight, and now Babers is just like he's just here now, and then this is going to be the deal. Now we've had the fallout of like you know, never having 85 scholarship guys and all that stuff. And so would it have been easier if we went four and eight, five and seven, seven and six, you know, like traditionally gone up and then had one down year like we did last year. And then we were like, I don't, it's, it's kind of weird that we have this one year that clearly made it seem like we could do it consistently, but I don't know. Like, I think that was kind of the, the worst thing to happen in a weird way. Like the fact that wasn't gradual, like it was just right. one big spike and now it's just been straight downhill <laughs> from that. I know right. it's painful. It is. It's very painful. It is. Imagine us. Like we played for the team. I, I, I yeah. know. I know. 
I know, and it's in as, as a fan, and I'm more of a realist, so you get around like the um, the very positive fans, and they they don't like to hear the negativity, and, and you got these you got these the the types of Syracuse fans. I could write a book about it. How many different types of Syracuse fans there are? It's like the realists, then the ones are like, "Oh, they're going to win the championship this year." Yeah, yeah, they're going undefeated. It's like, yeah, I mean, I doubt it. I doubt it. But yeah, the 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 quick high and then boom, withdraw. <laughs> Straight like freaking. Down. Str- yeah. <laughs> Not great. Not great. All right. No. Uh, let's let's finish up with some predictions. Okay. You can feel free to delve in a little bit if you want. I mean, that's up to you. Um, I got him at five and seven, and I I, I got him starting two and two. Um, with the obvious wins, I'm a little worried about Liberty. If we could get through that though at three and one with the loss to Rutgers, I would be okay. I just don't I just don't know. So I went I went on I aired on the on the pessimistic side. But I got wins against Wake Forest, Boston College. I, Pittsburgh's always a grudge match. We've yeah. lost a couple of close ones to Pitt the past few years, couple years. And I feel like inexcusable they, losses by the way. Yes. Inexcusable yes. Losses. And I feel like when it, Clayton Welch played quarterback that game. That was like a W in our hand that we just gave away. I'll yeah. never forget that game. Yes, it was terrible. It was pathetic. And I, I just can't see Syracuse at home uh, giving that one up at the end of the year. Hopefully, if everybody no. stays healthy, I think we get some revenge on Pitt. Um, the Boston College game, that was the last football I went to. Tyler, I met you there. <laughs> we got totally crushed, like 75 to negative 10. 56, nothing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it was really I bad. Paid, I paid the program to go to that game. <laughs> you guys traveled to go there. I know. That's a my fact. Goodness. That's a fact. So actually, I was there for a different reason. Though. I'm not sure anybody knows this, but I was actually interviewing with the athletic department. I was a finalist for a job there that I never ended up getting, but uh, probably for the best. But um, <laughs> that's the reason why I was there. <laughs> Would you have to move there? Right. That, that's 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 my point. <laughs> I mean, you're in a nice spot where you're at right now. Uh, I yeah, it's it's pretty pretty sweet. My wife was. Uh, she was very concerned that whole week what was going to happen. <laughs> she sabotaged you. Uh, Joe. Uh, I got him. Um, <laughs> six and six. Uh, okay. Three. I can see it very easily how we could start two and two. Um, but uh, I think that Liberty is probably the best team that we're playing. I think the first four games. So um, I don't know if we end up going three and one, the first four, I think that we'll end up going um, six and six would possibly a chance to seven, but I just think that there's some, some teams we're just really not going to be there. I think this year, um, I wish we played Clemson a little bit earlier in the season. I don't know what Florida state's going to look like with that, that transfer quarterback from central Florida, uh, wake forest is always tough. Boston right. college looks good. So, um, it's, yeah. it's, it's really, really tough because I think that it's going to be some real close games away from being a seven and five or a five and seven team, uh, but those first four, I think, have a lot to do with with what we're uh, what we're looking for. And honestly, a little selfishly, I have them there because <clears throat> I want to be able to go to the second to last game uh, down here in Raleigh uh, at NC State with uh, us still having a chance to make a bowl. So yeah, that would be exciting. I, I, I'm going to try to get there too. I know I say I think I yeah, say well, that every year. Yeah, well, if if they're three and seven, then you're not going to come. <laughs> well, no, that's that's not necessarily true. You know me, man. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I care, but it doesn't stop me from going. It wouldn't I've stop me from going. I've lived here for five years, and I've never seen you here for a second. Listen, dude, I'm kind of busy. Oof, I'm kind I of busy. Will, I'm just, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. kind of busy. Three hours away, bro. So is uh, Charlottesville. I haven't been there either. So I'm just saying. <laughs> By the way, our boy Giovanni. Great, great Tyler, testing. you know Giovanni. Yeah, of course. You know, he's uh, up in Virginia Tech. Yeah, he shunned us and then went yep. to a division school, or non-division school, but a conference school at that. I mean, sometimes you got to look at yourself, look deeply in the mirror, and just ask yourself, you know, like, who, who am I, really? <laughs> oh, wow. We lost out to a tech school. We lost out to look, a tech school. The, one of the greatest universities in the world. We lost out to a tech school. you got to be kidding me. I know, right? Geo. 
I, I almost I, I almost imagine might. me saying imagine me saying guys I turned down like a UT or like a Texas A&M scholarship I'm going to Texas Tech just let that sink in <laughs> Geo I love you Geo I do I just wanted the best for you I know Look, Poor, as I long would... as his heart stays orange well, that's what, that's what we're going to I'm just going to say. We're going to be, that's what we need. one of those things where he goes and graduates and then cheers for his alma mater for uh, to come back. I'm just going to let you know what's happening because it happened to me. Like, I don't root for the same teams I used to root for. Well, we'll poor Gio. Catching it. All oh, catching it. I know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, he's, he's orange through and through, but he's going, to be, he's going to be the voice of the Hokies someday. You know that, right? Uh, there's a little I bit know. of orange. He's in also going to be, yeah, like a millionaire on ESPN, like rubbing it in my <laughs> so he's face. He's going to be like... the next Mike Tirico, except for he wasn't our local <laughs> I, sports director, like, right? So it isn't. It doesn't matter what I think. We're right. going to be yelling at a sportscaster ten years from now, like he should have went to Syracuse. What the hell are right, you doing? Exactly. Um, all right, Tyler, what do you got? Six and six. I, I think it's. I think it's realistic. I, I do. Um, I would. I don't. Jeez, Louise. The fact that all of a sudden Liberty's quarterback is like, you know, the number one overall pick out of the clouds. Like, and I'm not sure if you saw this, but if you guys follow Bruce Feldman, uh, CFP on our C- or whatever it is on Twitter, Bruce Feldman, he writes for the athletic. He posted this picture of the Liberty quarterback. He is, he's like heavier than I was playing D line. Like he's like 250, and his quads are like just tree trunks. So, I mean, I doubt we'll win that game. But like I said before, it all c- <laughs> our chances for a bowl game go through Central New York via Piscataway, New Jersey, which is the craziest thing I w- I've said in a long time. It really comes down yeah, to that, that Rutgers that, game. That's it really comes down game. to every game when you think about it, but it really right. comes down to that Rutgers game. Yeah, that's, it's going to be huge. I mean, putting it in perspective like that, it's huge. Seriously. So, uh, Mike, what do you got, buddy? Yeah, I, 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 I got him at six and six as well. Um, I, I think the first three or first four games are it's the whole season, in my opinion, because, I mean, th- they can't afford to do one of these things where they go one and four or, you know, or one and three or just oh and two, anything like that. It, it, it's going to be catastrophic. But I do think that if they do start off, a, you know, three and oh or four and oh, they have a possibility of hitting eight games, I think, because. Mm-hmm. I think over the last few years, and let's just wipe out the, the one in 10 year, but the, a lot of the four and eight seasons and even my senior year, we we're like two or three plays away, you know, from winning those games. And so, not only like just like winning, like, but like beating Clemson, beating Florida right, exactly, State, like not exactly. like bad teams. Like we've always been in these games. Yeah, there's exactly. There's a few of them recently that I can think of would have looked a whole lot better or made made the pain ease a little bit at least. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, okay. I, yeah. Well, I didn't think I was going to be the most pessimistic one out of everybody, but that makes me feel like crap. So, no. <laughs> I mean, to his point, though, I mean, that's. You're so the, far off. Five and that's, seven. Yeah. That's what happens when the winds get taken out of your sails. I mean, that's why it's so like, sure. early. If you start 4 and 0, oh, then you look at a lot of these seasons, we end up 4 and 8 or whatever. We Really, the, the games we get blown out or they're near the end when we know we can't make a bowl or we've already Absolutely. pretty much lost right. the confidence in the team so Absolutely. if we can start off four and oh then again like to, to, to michael's point I mean, they can definitely the sky's the limit at that point because uh, confidence is confidence is crazy in this conference too um it never i don't think the best team i mean clemson wins every year don't get me wrong the best team right. wins it every year but the second best team in my opinion has never been the second best team in the conference right or the third or like you know it's like oftentimes florida state or uh, Miami is the second best team and they're always you know they never finish well it's like the the streak of this conference is always weird like Duke had a year Georgia Tech had a year like all these teams that finish second place they're never the second best team you know and I think that's kind of the way it goes with us it's like you know all these teams are swing teams and if we can beat the swing games like NC State or Pitt or whatever it's like okay now like the other teams are just like I don't know what it is but it's just probably I don't know the, the depth of coaching in our conference is not the greatest, and it never has been. All right, we got one more. We got one more from the green room going to give his predictions. Dominic, are you there? Oh, Dommy, how you doing? Dominic, hello. Hello. I, I don't know why this, this happens. It makes us look stupid. <laughs> Dominic, are you there? Oh, womp womp. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Operator error. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Hear me? Yes. Yeah. What the hell? Jeez, I'm crawling. So I was just about to hang up on you. <laughs> my man, young, there, there's my man different young screens. Greenville, South Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina, please. North Carolina, my bad. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here with Joe. So in, the, in yes. But anyway, there's a button on one of the screens that you have to. As soon as you pick up, you have to unmute yourself. And this is very different than I expected. But anyway. Okay. Well. So how do you? I figured it out. Okay. Which we're, well, Dominic is my children. So. <laughs> Did you get hand the hand your kid the phone so I could get you in the green room? <laughs> if they were in the room with me, I would have. But, but. Uh, all right, we're we're getting predictions, right. Dominic. I know you're I know you're well versed. You pay a lot of attention. You you know what's going on for the most part. Are you getting yes. yelled at right now? Are you out to dinner, no, Dominic? Where are you? No, <laughs> I, I'm in, I'm in my dining room avoiding my seven year old who's getting dressed for bed. Oh, okay. Right. Mm, right. Got it. So now I have to go into my bedroom because he is okay. – I'm on the phone, Benjamin. <laughs> so I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this so, is going swimmingly. Hey, you guys – yes, Sean, you have kids. You understand. I get um, it. So, so, yes. So predictions. I don't want you to have to do too much right there. <laughs> Joe. Joe can't contain himself. All right, Dom. What do, you, what do you got for your season prediction, buddy? All right. So I – I see a I see a reasonable and realistic six and six seven and five. Okay. I would be happy with four wins after what happened last year, and um, just to shove it in another podcast face, which you and I have had these conversations. I hope they don't lose a game because I'm so <laughs> tired of them. <laughs> and. Um, no, realistically, I, I I see six and six, seven and five. They 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 can. Um, this is not like years past where you've heard the leaks about how bad the offensive line has been. I remember at the beginning of last year, um, toward the beginning of the season, uh, we're getting whispers that you know the offensive line is having injury problems or the, they're not as good as they were last year. And I'm like, gosh, they won five games last year and they were terrible. What in the world is going to happen? So you you don't kind of hear that stuff this year. So I can see um, six and six, seven and five. And if you got to pin me down, I'll say six and six. All right, six and six. Do- How do Dominic, you see? Dominic, I, I, I'm going to follow up on this. It's Tyler Morona. Um, hey, Tyler. Who- Congratulations, hey. buddy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. On what, the wedding? Uh, yes. I okay, know it's fine. been – I we, we've DM'd a little bit, and I said congratulations, but this is the first time I have the pleasure of speaking you. to you personally, so I just wanted to say congratulations. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm humbled by that. So who is uh, – if, if between six and six and seven and five, like what's the one game that's going to make the difference for you? Um, I think it's Liberty. I, I do think too. That I think will, we're all there. I think we're I, all yeah, at Liberty. Yes, Liberty. I, I think they will split the, 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 the coin flip games. Um, the home coin flip games are going to win. Um, I'm personally hoping that – it's like like Joe because I'm I'm trying to get I'm trying to get to that NC State game. Um, I'm hoping that that coin flip game that puts them over the edge and that's their you know sixth or seventh win just just from a selfish standpoint. But um, and, and here's the thing too if 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 you look at the coin flip games if they lose them Dino's gone and I, and I know that's terrible to say but in this in this conference. You have to at least split those games and get to a bowl game to keep your job. And it didn't even keep Adazio's job. He felt like he went six and six every year, and they finally let him go. You know what I mean? But, um, but I think oh, that. Man. Oh man. So did you guys have that conversation already earlier that I missed? No, 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 no. Michael and I. Okay. Steve Adazio is like our child. We love him. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. Uh, I, I I don't want to take up your airtime. I, I don't know. If oh, I told please! You guys this. Yeah, let's not turn this into the Dominic hour, no, please. No. All right. We my my son and I, and you guys know he's trying to play college baseball, and we something happened when he he went to a Boston College camp, and it was the funniest thing ever. And one time offline, I will have to tell you that story. But we part of the tour that he took with the coaching staff of Boston College, they brought us on the football field, and something funny happened. So, but uh, it, it, the story will keep it kind of long, so I'll 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 keep it out of this. So okay, 
What a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dominic. Dominic's got him yes. going to a bowl game. You got him at six and six. I, I'm at five and seven. And yeah, like you said, I, I'm, I have to agree with you, Dominic, the Liberty game, because I got him going two and two. And if they can start off three and one, that's a difference maker for me. And, yeah. and to every, I think it, we all agree. Right, Tyler? Right, Mike? Joe? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Sir. And here's the craziest thing, too, because my, my best friend, he grew up in Mississippi. And he's a Mississippi State fan. He said if DeVito is terrible, he goes, DeVito being good will actually, he thinks, hurt our team. He thinks that if DeVito loses, because we've gone over the schedule together in the Mississippi State schedule a little bit. He thinks if Syracuse loses to Rutgers, he thinks that Deve- that uh, Babers will put, like Schaefer will be the guy. And so he thinks that with an SEC quarterback that we can that we can win eight or nine games with, with him. In, in the ACC, mm-hmm. he doesn't know if this team, you know, and was in the SEC if it could, but he just said, you know, looking at it, he thinks he thinks that highly of of his former quarterback. So we'll we'll see mm-hmm. how it goes. All right, Dominic, thanks a lot, man. You take care. All right, you're you're welcome. You too. All right, buddy. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, right, bud. Hey, do we have time to go over the Mississippi State and cross uh, reference it with the Q schedule? <laughs> hey, Joe. Next time you put your headset down, mute your microphone, bro. <laughs> It was like, <laughs> um, I, 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 like I said, I love Dominic. Dominic's the best. I mean, Dominic's he, great. You just, just like, got to make sure Dominic, you don't let him go too far. Because if you let him go too far, I mean, you're he's goes, whoo, he's in la la land quick, and he'll go. He's a talker. He's a mailman. He's a talker. <laughs> <laughs> I, any any final thoughts? Have you ever met a chatty mailman? I've ever met a mailman <laughs> yes. in my life. It's never said a word. Like, really? Like, 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 I got places to be. It's literally all about getting the mail delivered. And Dude, right. my 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 mail people will sit and talk. If I catch them outside, I make sure I'm not outside when I got two of them. I make sure I'm not out there. They'll so talk wear blinders when you go get your mail. Just no, like, I just uh, make sure sorry, I'm, I, I just don't go out. I go out front to mow the lawn and go to my car. That's it. <laughs> Um, all right, any final thoughts on anything that we discussed, anything you want to add, um, Tyler or Mike? Joe, I think is good, okay? Well, look, I really no, want to – I had a question. I okay. had a question. All right, well, get, okay, whatever. Speak for me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. Um, no, I was just going to ask, uh, how much do you guys think um, joining the ACC since you guys – you know, you were there when that um, – that change happened like joining the ACC. Do you think that that's made it more difficult for this team to be at least more you know, consistent year in, year out, like six and six type stuff? I mean, I look at Ohio, the team we're about to play the first game of the season and they've only missed one bowl. I mean, granted they're in the Mac, but they've only missed one bowl game in the last like 10 years. So, I mean, six and six isn't a hard ask. Usually, uh, right. do you think them, you think them going into the ACC, making that change and, you know, obviously, Going into a tougher conference, um, do you think that's made it more difficult for us to get to that point? Or, uh, yeah, I'm. I would say, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, I don't think. I don't think it's been more difficult. I think, you know, as far as the competition, I feel like we've definitely done a better job in the recruiting aspect and finding, you know, ACC talent. I think honestly, what it came down to is just like injuries, inconsistency, and. Um, Honestly, like, again, a few plays here and there, and that just flopped the whole season, you know, flopped the seasons, you know, and boom, you're at four and eight or three and eight over, like, games you should have won. I can think of my senior year against Notre Dame, like, two or three plays, and we win that game. You know, yep. Wake Wake Forest, a couple of plays, we win that game, <laughs> you know, so, so, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm diehard, right? So, I mean, I graduated 2001, like, I, I when you guys played – the seasons you were there, I mean, I was pretty much probably at 90% of the games, right. um, the home games anyway, you know, and I always thought that, like, I was the guy, you know, and I'm not going to compare coaches, but I was the guy where I said, you know, when Schaefer got fired, I said, oh, he didn't get, you know, three years, because right. I, I just always looked at some of those games like, um, like you said, like, they were a lot closer than when we were. I looked at the, the records, and I was like, you know, I feel like we're a lot better than that record. It's just a few right. plays here, not an injury there, like, you know, stuff like that. And I always just – I always got upset at the fans. They kind of always cried, you know, or called for the coaches' heads because I don't think a, a head coaching revolving door of every three or four years is 
is very healthy either. You know, you want to grow a, a culture and have right. people come in and out, like you said. So um, I never thought that it was really that bad. But, you know, Dino came in and he brought a different, you know, different type of culture and everything. And, and, and I think that this year is the year that they got to they got to get it back on track because I don't want right. to see him leave, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, I don't either. I don't yeah. either. I, I mean, but at some point is what have you done for me lately? And if. Yep. Yeah, for sure. You know what yeah, I mean? Update that resume. <laughs> I think yeah. what it just comes down to is that, like, by going – so in 2012 or 2012-13, we win the Pinstripe Bowl. We shared the Big East Championship, literally. Like, you know, obviously yep. when that happened, we had a top 10 draft pick in Justin Pugh leave, and then we also had Ryan Nassib, two of the better players in the last, like, what, 20 or 30 years lead the program. So obviously that's going to hurt. But yep. beyond that – what the ACC does is that even if we like, okay, so the recruiting goes up with the, the ACC and the conference brings better players. The difference is that the margin of error just becomes way smaller. It's, right. you know, it's, it's going from, you know, Mac to ACC. It's just non-comparable, right? If you were to throw Ohio or whoever the best Mac team has been over the last 10 years into the ACC, they're just going to get humbled really quickly because they're just not used to having to make every play perfectly all the time or else you lose. That's just what it comes down to. And that's the difference. And what it has been is like, I think it's just maybe the tradition of not like having the guys that understand, like, this is how you do it. All the medical disqualifications, me being one of them time after time, after time, after time, after time, just going, you know, and guys that you're excited about come in and then immediately are done. And that, Mm -hmm. that's just a spot that's like never going to come back. Right. Like that, you don't, you just totally lost and sunk cost with that guy. And, um, so there's, it, it's been a combo of everything. You know, it's just the perfect storm. And that's why I think a lot of us are excited about this year or they're like disgusted. They're just like, Oh, it's just another reason for us to get upset. Again. So, <laughs> I know yeah. Syracuse fans love being pissed. They love it. Um, well, I want to thank both of you, Michael. Thanks for coming on, man. I hope to, I hope Absolutely. that we get you back again. Uh, really appreciate it, Tyler. We love you. You're you're the regular. How about the how about the Ty and Mike show? Hmm. Ty and Mike show. My yeah. dream is to have like you know just like yeah. maybe four or five dudes just on a couch with a microphone and you know or maybe multiple couches. Right. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, you're gonna need more than one. Air out everything for like two hours a week, and then we just call it. You know, that, that's my yeah. dream. Okay, uh, Pat McAfee show. I would, I would love it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, Joe and I will be back with uh, the Ohio preview here shortly. I want to thank Michael again, Tyler. Thank you guys. Really appreciate yes. it. For Mike, for Ty, for Joe. I'm Sean. We're out of here. Peace. Oh, wow. I like it. I like it. I like it.